can you talk a little bit about about this dynamic where you have you know within this Republican Party, you have two very much different camps responding to this intellectually. So again, I, I think this is some of the yeah this is stuff I love within American history. Yeah. So the, the, this the Panic of eighteen nineteen. You had this the, the this the second bank of the United States caused this big credit bubble, and then it contracts to save itself from going illiquid if it's losing too much specie. Uh, William Gouge had the famous uh, quote: "The bank was saved, but the people were ruined." This caused a, a lot of controversy, and people were upset about this. They were uh, upset that there was this downturn going on. Started in basically February of eighteen nineteen right around the, the scandals of the Baltimore branch being exposed. And then especially after basically those individuals get off with a slap in the, you know, a light slap on, on the wrist. Does so that nothing that, really like, serious. I mean, these people go, go on to have like successful political careers afterwards. It's like, there's like there's yeah. no consequences at all to this stuff. Like, yeah, basically. And, and this is, this, this infuriates uh, uh, people uh, because they're seeming, it, it seems that, well, this, this bank is, 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 Basically, this giant monster, this Hydra, if you will, that's corrupting uh, are the, the very um, the, the very fibers of, of 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 the government, and so you see this growth in either the the hard money uh, forces, the people who are opposed to central banking, they're opposed to fractional reserve banking, they want to reform the monetary system, along the lines that Jefferson proposed in the 1790s, but he didn't really carry out. In his or in his first administration, and then you see the soft money forces, the guys of Henry Clay, Daniel Webster, John Quincy Adams, even John Marshall, etc., who are uh, basically advocating, yeah, well, the central bank is good. It's actually we need more central banking uh, because in order to stabilize the economy and to promote economic growth and and so on. And this was really kind of dovetailed nicely with these new intellectual works coming out. Some of uh, Say's and uh, De Tracy's works had uh, uh, the suit De Tracy's works uh, were, were being translated into English and promoted. Partially, one individual who's doing this was uh, Thomas Jefferson, which I think is really cool. Uh, he's once he's out of power, he's kind of back in the saddle for laissez faire, as, as I put it, and that just shows you how he was just really a good ideologue, and, and he was he was always someone better outside of office than in office. I believe Murray Rothbard once said that. And uh, you, you see that the, these individuals are advocating, uh, well, they're anti-central banking. They're arguing, well, we need to either have uh, 100% reserves or some form of, of free banking among fractional reserve banks. So to, to promote competition, this would limit credit expansion. And then you're seeing various American system economists uh, you know, of, of, Hen of the Henry Clay variety. They're promoting additional government intervention. They're justifying the central bank. Uh, and so on, and even some establishment periodicals are doing this. And so the this, this is something I, I try and hammer home all the time in my book, as well as when I'm giving talks and et cetera. You've got the abstract theory that various economists and intellectuals develop, and that has to actually get filtered down to the masses in some way. So either through newspapers or shorter writings, et cetera, many Americans had learned of, 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 of say, the, right, the, the writings of, say, um, through college, it, it Say's work was a very popular college textbook, et cetera. And this is how ideas get filtered down and why you need sort of that structure of production, right? So the forces of liberty had kind of amassed this structure of production. And this led to this, this, this really brilliant, I'd say heroic, a uh, resurgence of hard money thought that was would 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 exert an, a very important influence in American history in the decades to come. Mm -hmm.